Thanks, Patrick, for joining us. Now, we've seen a fall in trade over the last few quarters. Can you explain and help us understand what is the real reason for the fall? Is it lack of finance or is it lack of demand? I think that for the most part it's the reduction of demand arising from the financial crisis which fed through into the real economy, the credit crunch and simply the cessation of production. A bit, certainly in the beginning, was uh, as a result of the credit markets drying up in respect of trade finance. But I think uh, that part is relatively small for most countries. There are, however, some countries where this is a real problem. And there's some international efforts going on to make sure that credit can be made available where it's needed. And can you tell us something about the regional trends in the fall in trade? Which are the areas which have seen a sharper fall and which are the areas and regions which have seen a more temperate fall? I think it fell pretty hard almost everywhere. Asia, in particular, I think, took larger falls in the, in the initial period. But we have seen the Asian economies starting to pick up more effectively than the rest of the world. Can you tell us a sense of uh, the outlook for rebound of international and global trade and what will this rebound depend on? I think that will take a long time. Um, it's hard to estimate precisely, but we're not talking about yet next year, maybe the year after. Who knows? That's a bit of guesswork. This is um, almost unprecedented since we started to keep proper data. If you look at the last episode of comparable proportions in the uh, late 20s and early 30s, the fall was not as dramatic as it has been here. But then the recovery looks as if it will be faster than it was then. And that's partly because governments are using policies now that they didn't have at their disposal then. And there are very, various other reasons as well that are quite different in the monetary economy, the gold standard and so on, the possibility of exchange rate adjustments. A range of factors have meant that we, uh, we're not out of the woods, we still have a problem, but the, the fall seems to have bottomed out for the most part and we hope that now we can start to see things picking up. But the, the trade flow number, the total trade in volume terms, fell by, um, will fall by more than 10% in 2009, and that's a very large figure. But the question really is how long are we going to trip along the bottom, and when are we going to start to pick up? Um, you know, a lot of what goes wrong in markets is to do with the, the attitude of the uh, agents in markets and the fact that everybody lost confidence. And I think as this slowly comes back, the fiscal and financial stimulus packages start to kick in. We're relatively successful at keeping protection under control, at least so far. And so I think all that comes together and you start to see a pick up. But there are downside risks. One of the downside risks is that all this money being pumped into the economy could lead to inflationary pressures. If that happens, then governments at some point will feel obliged to turn off the credit tap to make sure, or at least to reduce interest rates, so I'm sorry, to increase interest rates, so we get a reduction in demand. And that, of course, is why some people refer to this, the famous double dip. We hope very much that that will be avoided. One of the factors which is uh, causing a lot of fear amongst those who want open markets is the rise of protectionism. Now, what role will protectionism play as we go ahead? How much of the delay in rebound would be caused by protectionism? My sense at the moment is that protection has not been resorted to in a very large measure. I think governments have shown restraint. I think perhaps the world is a different place today from when the um, crisis of the 30s took, took place. And there's much more interdependency, much stronger realization how important trade is for everybody. So perhaps and may, I don't want to be thought of as being excessively optimistic because I don't think it's over yet. But I do think that if we look at, at what's happened so far, there isn't cause for alarm, but there's certainly cause for vigilance to make sure that this continues. I also believe that one particular factor will, make, will, imp will imply certain pressure on, on protectionist temptation on the part of governments, and that is unemployment. Unemployment is what we call a lagged variable. Unemployment will persist 
well into 2010 and quite likely into 2011. And that unemployment is something that will cause uh, governments to have to sustain additional pressure or resist additional pressure uh, for protection measures. What is the projection for uh, the future? What are the figures you're looking at as uh, we get ready for a rebound in global trade? We haven't done any formal projections yet for 2010, but we would expect it. We would expect trade either to be mildly negative or start to move into positive territory on a year-on-year -year basis. Bear in mind that it is um, coming from a very low base, given the strong contraction that, took, that started in the, at the end of 2008 and is only just beginning to slow down now. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for joining us.